I'm Femi O.K. and you're in the stream. Today, a British actress playing an iconic American abolitionist. Why are people saying hashtag not my Harriet? I'm Malika Bilal. Don't forget to tweet us and send us your comments on YouTube during the live conversation. But before we get started, take a look at this. There's not much time. You got to be miles away from here for dawn. Where is she? Follow that North Star. If there are no stars, just follow the river. Listen for them. Fear is your enemy. Whoa. Easy now. I'm gonna be free or die. That's part of the trailer for Harriet, an upcoming biographical film about American abolitionist Harriet Tubman. Cynthia Erivo landed the title part, but many people are now upset that Erivo, who is a British Nigerian, was cast instead of an African-American actress. They've been voicing their opinions online using the hashtags NotMyHarriet, Harriet Deserves Better, and ADOS, short for American Descendants of Slavery. So why was this particular casting decision so controversial? And what does the debate say about black identity in the U.S.? Well, joining us to discuss these questions in Los Angeles, Antonio Moore is a co-founder of American Descendants of Slavery. In Johannesburg, South Africa, Hollywood actor Hakeem K. Kazim, who's appeared in numerous films, including Hotel Rwanda and Half of a Yellow Sun. And here with us on set in Washington, D.C., Heather Harris is a professor at Stevenson University and author of a new book, neo-race realities in the Obama era. Welcome, everyone. So there are two parts to this Harriet controversy. Hello, guests. Part one is the actress and her tweets. And then part two is her heritage. Where's she from? Let's, let's tackle the tweets, because they're controversial. Uh, screen grabs, because as most people know, if they get into trouble online, you delete your tweets. But somebody somewhere has them. So let's just have a look at this. Uh, this is Cynthia in a conversation referencing ghetto American accent. Now, I have to remember, I'm taking this out of context. Again, another conversation where people are saying, well, we don't think you represent African Americans. And then Cynthia says, oh, darling, all of these presumptions, it is you who believes you are the representation for all mm -hmm. African Americans. That is incorrect. Mm -hmm. Let me give you one more. The African in African American is the thing I understand more fully than most uh, if you think that are black, and then it goes on and on and on. So it's just the idea that people who are upset about Cynthia are upset because she's tweeted things that they find disrespectful, and she's played many African-American characters. Mm -hmm. So this person sums it up on Twitter uh, with the hashtag Our Story or the, the handle Our Story. This particular actress has made offensive remarks concerning African Americans. Being that Harriet Tubman was an African American legend, it is disrespectful to cast this lady in the role. So that's one person's take, but I wanted to share another. So this person uh, uh, took screen grabs, some of the ones that you have there, or others that she's compiled, or this person has compiled. They go by the handle Electric Bo Peep, and they explain why they think uh, many of the tweets that they've found from this actress are problematic. Electric Bo Peep sent us an audio comment with their thoughts. Have a listen. Why do we think Harriet deserves better? Because Cynthia Revo has a very troubling, very consistent seven-year pattern from 2011 to 2018 of belittling African Americans and promoting and defending the ethnic bigotry towards the very people who Harriet Tubman fought to free, descendants of chattel slavery. Because for the last 11 months, Cynthia Revo has done everything to evade accountability for these actions. Would an anti-Semite be allowed to play Moses? Why should Cynthia Riva be allowed to play R. Moses? Strong words there. Antonio, I'm going to hand that right off to you. What do you make of that aspect of this controversy? Well, let me start off by saying that I think that what we don't recognize is to be put at odds with our own story, where we have to boycott Harriet. I mean, um, this hashtag that's going around, uh, pushed by not just ADOS, but many black people across the country is pointing out a reality, a reality that we don't know enough about Cynthia Revo, her past. Um, the recent article came out in The New Yorker about slave trading in Nigeria. Wouldn't it be something if we do find out that she is Dahlia, which are the slave traders in Nigeria, and she is not Ohu? But in addition, 
We have a long history, going back to Hattie McDaniel, of black actresses, African-American actresses, pushing for an opportunity to be casted in roles that go beyond um, just being Mammy and Gone with the Wind. But now when the role is actually here, you see this whole kind of shifting where we're going to look for more classically trained people. We're not going to look for people that actually can play the, the role of ADOS better. Hakeem. Well, you know, it's interesting you say this, because as an African, as an Englishman, I see many African-Americans playing African roles, uh, from Don Cheadle to, you know, uh, uh, Denzel Washington, uh, a myriad of them, Forrest Whitaker, all of them playing iconic African roles. Uh, Tay Diggs, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's many. They've all played iconic African roles. As an artist, I do not begrudge them. I think it's very important that they give a chance to express themselves as long as they have the integrity and the honesty to portray the people that they're portraying in, in, in a real uh, and honest way. So, um, you know, I find this a quite a duplicitous argument in one sort of sense, and that you're not looking at the full picture. See, and I, I believe that that kind of falls apart, because what you're actually talking about is star actors in Hollywood playing roles in American films. In addition, you create an identitarian oneness in Africa as though I don't understand how that could be an American me, film if you if Well, you, let me if, let me finish. If, uh, let me finish and I'll actually say it. When you talk about um, when you talk about Will Smith playing a Nigerian doctor in America in a film about CTE in the NFL, it's an American film. In addition, Africa is not a country. Tell me about your country and your tribe. What you see is that uh, idea that we're going to create 52 countries into one country and give them the qualities of, a un of identitarian oneness that they don't operate with but they're themselves. In actuality, these are very disassociated places. So now you become one place, or is it 52 places with many I'm tribes? I'm not sure if you're... I, I'm not quite sure what you're trying to say here, because I never said Africa was one country. I, for one, know it is. I'm telling you that African-Americans have played a, a variety of different African roles African character roles, right? We're American in the same films. way, you're, they're not American films if they're playing Afri if they're playing African characters. They're African no, characters. No, they are. They're, in they're, these they're, they're, so, they're for the. So, Antonio and Hakeem, just take a take a take take a pause for a moment. I I, I hear Antonio uh, making a case. I hear Hakeem, you making a case. Heather, as, as you, we, we started off with Cynthia yes. and, and this problematic background that she appears to have. She, she's got baggage. Yes. So let's just address that. And then go broader. So that's the thing that I hear both gentlemen. What I am hearing most, though, is the disrespect that is felt by people of African descent in America, the, the American descendants of slaves. That's what I'm hearing, the disrespect that has resulted. Because as your guests have said, there have been actors playing parts all over the world. Mandela was played by Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Can, I, can I show a few? Because yes, there were so course. many. We could do the whole show by showing them, yeah, but let me just, just do one. Um, this is Denzel, a Steve Biko, mm -hmm. a young Denzel, the man almost never ages. Uh, Jennifer Hudson as Winnie Mandela. Yes. How do South Africans feel about that? Correct. And then, oh my goodness, Ugandans. Forrest Whitaker playing Idi Amin. And the list goes on and on and on. Indeed. I think if you want to really get to the core of this, it's about the respect that the actress Erivo has for African-Americans. African-Americans feel disrespected by what she said, and now she is representing a very iconic character. And I know through reading that it has been said, I can just read the page. She didn't say this, but I can just read the script and I can connect to it in my way without the baggage mm -hmm. and things like that. What I sense from the tweets, et cetera, is that African-Americans want someone who understands Harriet Tubman from an intimate level mm -hmm. and from a, a, a lyrical and painful ancestral memory, not just, I'm going to take the part, I can, I can interpret this part. They want almost yeah. someone that is being driven. They want them to have a resume that says, I totally well, agree. even deep, beyond a resume, deep into African -American they, want, they want someone who actually feels the ancestral presence of a Harriet Tubman mm. playing that also, role. Here's someone that might agree add. with you. I, I, Antonio, I hear you there, but I want to bring in this person I think would agree, and I saw you nodding your head as well. So this is Ashlo on Twitter who says the problem isn't so much that she's British, but that she has said and supported things in the past that show she doesn't understand, support, or respect black Americans or their culture. She was the wrong choice. Antonio, your thoughts? 
let me say two parts. The first part is these actors that you guys have brought up playing different roles. I don't know if you have a history of them saying anything disrespectful about the countries or tribes they were representing. But in addition, it's a Hollywood financing math that when you get a big star like uh, Forrest Whitaker or Will Smith or Morgan Freeman, it could lead to financing the film. Cynthia Erivo doesn't even have the history to be the lead role in this film. I'm saying she doesn't have this strong backing in Nigeria. She doesn't have this great backing in British. And she barely has a film history in America. So you don't have that same need for her to play the lead role. There are great African-American women that did not get a chance here in America. And I would love to see who they actually auditioned. Let me bring this. Go, go ahead, Hakeem. I'll, I'll go. No, second. I was going to say that I, I, I agree with you in terms of the fact that if she's not respectful and she hasn't respected the culture and understood the history of where she is, uh, where, where the characters come from, and where the, the, the essence of the people have come from, then you're right. She shouldn't be playing the role. But as an artist, as, a, as an entertainer, I don't, I don't think that's the case. You know, I think that. Hollywood, we're having this discussion within a space that we did not create for ourselves. Yeah. Hollywood creates the space, right? Mm -hmm. They decide through their mode of production, as Kellner would say, he's a media scholar. He says they decide who puts the scripts up, what scripts mm -hmm. are up, what they get to represent. And most of the scripts that we get represent the dominant culture's narrative. The ones that don't are usually independent films. So if this is mm -hmm. a, a larger film production, Hollywood doesn't care who plays the part as long as finances come in. So we are arguing on a number of different levels. One, we're arguing about the disrespect that Cynthia allegedly uh, had for African or has for African Americans. Two, we're arguing in a space about one another in the diaspora that we haven't created for ourselves. Because in actuality, yes, we do play parts across the spectrum. It is about getting to know one another. We're talking from a place of stereotypes. We haven't really had conversations with one another to determine how we feel about one another and the roles that exist for us to play. If we See, were, this is, if we were uh, to have that I, conversation, I, we would realize that there are multiple stories and that we can uh, then share how to depict those stories and with whom. Mm. And so, see, this is my only ahead, this is my only critique. My only critique of that point is we're in America talking about roles in America, and it's not Cynthia Erivo in, in isolation. We see Daniel Kaluuya playing uh, Fred Hampton. We see uh, uh, Martin Luther King played by David uh, um, Awalu. And what we don't see is a critical uh, um, an analysis, not only of who else got to audition for these roles, but also. Who are these people and what is their lineage? See, we would never accept a white person playing Harriet Tubman for whatever, for a multitude of reasons, appearance, lineage, everything else. But we don't want to ask that question about somebody who is Igbo. We need to know more. Blackness is not flat in America, and it's not a flat across the globe. Antonio, and I, let me just, just add for, for people who are not Nigerian that Igbo is one of the tribes in Nigeria. Right. Heather, yes, go ahead. To, to speak about who plays roles where, Denzel Washington played in Much Ado About Nothing, that, uh, Kenneth Branagh, I think, in the 80s or 90s. He didn't speak yeah, with a British accent. He, he just you know, worked his way through that. that I part. remember that right. production. Right. <laughs> it was just, slightly odd. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. So here you have all these Shakespearean yeah. um, uh, uh, actors, and you have Denzel. Yeah. And he was there, and I watched it, and I said, you know, I, I liked it. It, it kind of worked. It was American and, and Brits just yeah. coming together and bringing whatever they had to the mix. Mm. Yes, I think we have opportunity here yeah. that we're missing because we're getting stuck in the name calling. Mm. Malika. So I, I want to bring, the, I wanna bring I agree the other with that side question. of this conversation, and I hear you there, Hakeem, because uh, some of the earlier tweets I read were clearly from people who were uh, uh, descendants of slaves in America. This is the other side. Here are a few tweets from Africans. Joe Black says, we've had African Americans playing Nelson, as we've mentioned, and Winnie for years. Let me not hear one peep from one of them about that. She's a great actor and the trailer rocks. I love it. Another person, also African, writing in saying, I find this so strange. If you think of how Americans have appropriated other people's stories from having, having Morgan Freeman and Terrence Howard 
playing Mandela, Will Smith playing Dr. Bennett Omolu, uh, Denzel Washington playing Steve Biko, Don Cheeto, and Hotel Rwanda. The list is endless. So we've mentioned those names. You saw the pictures there. But I'm interested, Hakeem, because you were in Hotel Rwanda with Don Cheeto. Were these conversations happening then? And if not, do you think this is progression, that we're now having them? No, you know, I don't remember having those conversations uh, directly with, with, with Don or anybody like that. I'm not sure if the conversation was had outside of that. I know subsequently with uh, various uh, um, uh, castings and various people playing Mandela, there has been a conversation and, uh, and, and people playing Winnie Mandela, there has been a conversation. But, uh, you know, I think the most important thing is, is that uh, when I was on set in Hotel Rwanda, there was a definitely a community and definitely a gathering together to tell this particular story. And I thought that was the most important thing. And I had no, uh, as an African myself, I did not feel that Don Cheadle couldn't play that character or shouldn't play that character. For me, the most important thing was, was that he had the integrity, the depth and the honesty to really reach into the humanity of that character. And he did that fantastically, and uh, he was a he was a gentleman to the core, and I loved working with him, and uh, and I think that was the most important thing. Look, the king of Wakanda yeah, and, and is an African American. Yeah, and I just Sorry? push back against. I push back king, against. Uh, uh, Heather says the king of Wakanda is an African American. So uh, exactly, exactly. I mean, you know. So what are you going to do about that's not a, that's not a real you. country? It doesn't but matter. But it's a movie. We're talking about Hollywood. Hollywood yeah, but, but is we're about not talking about Hollywood. See, Hollywood you, you, is, the, what is what is structuring this entire conversation. Hollywood no, decides no, what what's gets structuring made. This conversation, who, what's structuring who this conversation it? is Adolf's. What's structuring this conversation is African Americans have decided to make, make it clear that there's a bigger narrative going on. And the reality is that you need people that are in those positions, in those rooms, that won't make tweaks like, uh, like, like Arivo made. Antonio, that speak out let, let me share something with time. you because we, we have an, uh, 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 an actor in our midst, but we, uh, I want to hear from an African American actor who also was part of this conversation. Uh, back in 2017, Samuel L. Jackson spoke on Hot 97, a radio station. It was a deep, deep, deep conversation, but here's a little, a little slice of it so you can hear his perspective. Have a look. The thing in my mind is, I know the young brother is in the movie, and he's British. So there are a lot of British, black British actors that work all in the country. Time. All, all the, the time. All the time. All the time. So I tend to wonder, what would that movie have been with an American brother who really understands that. that in a way because i mean daniel grew up in a country where you know they've been interracial dating for 100 years you know right. you know britain's there's only about like eight real white people left in britain the rest <laughs> of them you know, mixed. <laughs> so what, what would a brother from america have made of that role you know and, I, I, and i'm sure the director helped and you know some things are universal but everything ain't so Antonio, keeping in mind what Sam Jackson said there, I wanted to share this on Twitter from Black State of America, who say black citizens of other countries can empathize, empathize but never understand Afro descendants' experiences any more than we can fully understand their experiences. We have connected heritage and spiritual ancestors, but our lives are very different, especially inside of America. So what do you make of this tweet? Because it kind of sounds like what Sam was saying in that clip there, that unless you've had that lived experience, you you can't actually bring it to the role. Let me say this, just so everybody around the around the globe, even in America that, that are watching this can understand. The recent report comes out in Los Angeles, A Color of Wealth. They actually break out Africans from uh, native blacks. And w one of the first reports to be done like this in was done by the Federal Reserve along with several economists, one being Sandy Darity. And what you saw is that the middle Nigerian family in Los Angeles is worth about $140,000 hard, almost 70000 of it is liquid. The middle native black family in Los Angeles is worth $200 liquid. What we're not dealing with is not only the fact that they have this wealth, which, is, which puts them on par with white America in many ways, but also where does it come from? Now you come back to what Samuel Jackson was saying. His, la his most important narrative or, or point was that they had interracial dating for a hundred years. Understand during those years, we had Jim Crow and redlining. It's not just about being black in melanin. It's about lineage. It's about the narrative of what we went through and the fact that we've been locked out of being American for so long. And now as we push through, all of a sudden we want to flatten blackness, but not discuss what, what that means.
Yes, I want to play one more clip because I found this clip. One, one of my colleagues at Al Jazeera found this clip today and sent me the link to it. It's a story about how Idris Elba got his role on The Wire. Heather, you've been in Baltimore for a very long time. This is a remarkable story. Thank you to Complex Media for allowing us to play this clip. This is how Idris got his Wire role. Alexa Fogel was a casting director that was really into seeing new talent, and she met me. And then she said, I love you. I gotta bring you into this audition, but you gotta promise me you can't tell them you're from East London. I'm like, what? She said, yeah, you gotta walk in there, you gotta talk with your accent. You live in Brooklyn, right? You gotta sit in the barbershop, talk all day. I was like, okay. So my first audition, I walked in there, and I had to just pretend. She's outside the door, she's like, remember, don't go in there with an English accent. Hey, here he is, Idris Elba, ladies and gentlemen. So I sat in there and I did my first audition. And David Simon was like, oh, great, great. Um, let's do it one more time. Hakeem, can you see why African-Americans would be kind of furious? Have you ever faked oh. an American accent to get a role? All the, all the time, you know, you, 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 it's, 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 you know, hopefully you're not faking an American accent. You're, you're, you're trying to embody the humanity of the, of the people. And I, I get the discussion and I get the, 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 the the pain of uh, of, of this uh, of the young lady playing Harriet Tubman and, and disrespecting uh, uh, African American and African American culture, but I, I think from an artistic point of view, as an artist, as an as an actor, then I think you want to be able to en en encompass anything and everything. And uh, and I understand uh, Ados. I think they're African um, uh, Americans in the di uh, descendants of slavery. I understand where that comes from too, because in the one sense. Hollywood has left people of color out of, 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 of the discussion. And so, yes, they're fighting for that place. I get that. But on, a, on an artistic sense, I'm not, I'm not weird that I think that we as artists should be able to play and and, and it, as long as we can embody those characters in the, in, 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 with true honesty and integrity. Otherwise, tell, you can't tell me that any American should play an African. Well, and this is, the, this is, the, I think this is what about saying. scarcity as well. You know, when you have roles for African American men, yes. you, need, you need seven white males have seven times those roles. Yes. So you're talking about scarcity. So I understand very much what Antonio is saying in terms of as an African uh, uh, African American man or, or person, their unique experiences that have occurred here that have not occurred elsewhere, even though I myself come from descendants of slaves in Barbados. Colonization resulted in Africans being treated horribly. And so we all have a story of pain and suffering and oppression that continues to this day. So for Samuel Jackson to say, uh, British blacks have been marrying whites for hundreds of years. That's yeah, kind of that's oversimplifying the issue, that's right? Uh, black Brits are suffering. You have the Winbush issue now, where that's people who okay. came from the Caribbean to work in Britain no longer have papers because the British government decided to throw them and away. And they're being deported, and deported, being deported to a country they've never After doing all the work, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. we've had these horrible experiences throughout the diaspora. We have got to come to a point where we see this as how do we work with what we know? How do we work with this scarcity that we currently have to make it abundant? And as opposed is, to fighting issue. within the scarcity. Mm. When and we talk about scarcity, we Antonio, when we talk about scarcity, I wanted to bring this to you because this is a, a former guest of the show. This is Talib Kweli who tweeted August 6th, this is inexcusable. Inexcusable. You should be ashamed of yourselves for creating a hate cult that leads to anti-black tweets like this. And he, he tags uh, you in this tweet here. What do you say to people that say, this is anti-immigration re rhetoric and this is anti-black rhetoric? I say that you guys should have never put something on the screen that said ADOS is trash. It's, a, it's basically a statement against black voters and black people in America basically saying the same things that other governments do in, inside of their citizenship. If you look at the Ghanaian citizenship, basically they set it up where they don't have to do this orally. It's already 
like preset into the citizenship that you get certain benefits from being there and having a long lineage there. That's not the case in America. Birthright citizenship came through the slave and was basically given to everyone, and that's where we're at now. Antonio, but what I will say... I'm going to have to leave it there. We're literally at the very end of the show. This conversation isn't over yet. There are multiple hashtags. Antonio's online. Hakeem is online. Heather is not online, but Malika and I are. And we will find you there at AJ Stream or at aljazeera.com forward slash the stream. Thank you for being part of the conversation. We'll see you next time. Take care.